Hey guys, Toby Mathis here, and today we're going to go over the wash sale loss rule. I'm just going to call it the wash sale rule to give you a better understanding of what it is, what it isn't, and how it works. So first off, I'm just going to switch over to my white screen, which you'll see my little head pop up, and we're just going to call this the wash sale. And I'm going to put wash sale loss rule because it only has an effect on stocks that you sell for a loss. I'm going to walk you through what the rule is right now. So we're just going to make it real simple. So the IRS says, and I'll give you the uh, publication. It's going to be publication. I'm just going to put 550. And, uh, but there's a, the law is actually in 26 USC um, 1091. And just to kind of spell it out for you, and then I'll give you guys examples, is basically you cannot deduct losses. You notice it doesn't say gains. You don't deduct gains anyway, but it has nothing to do with gains. If you make money on a sale, don't worry about this. If you lose money on a sale, then worry about this. So you cannot deduct losses from sales of stock or securities. So this is a big one. You cannot deduct losses, loss, and then it's going to give you um, if, and I'm just going to say if. Now, there is a, a portion of the code where it actually says, uh, unless you're a uh, trader in stocks or securities. So this does not, you don't have to worry about this if you're a trader, or if you're trading for other people's accounts, like you're, you're actually a stockbroker. But um, you're just going to say, if uh, within 30 days of the loss, I'll just put it this way, and I'm paraphrasing this, I'm not going to write the whole law out. If within 30 days of the loss, and just note here, they don't say after. So it's 30 days before and 30 days after. It's kind of a weird thing to think about, but 30 days of the loss, and it can be 30 days, so it could be before or after, and uh, you just say it, you, and we'll just go through their little list. So first off is, we'll just start going through this. Number one, you buy substantially identical stock or securities. So what that means, if I sell uh, a company, let's just say it's an ETF and the ETF is an energy ETF and I sell it for a loss and then I buy back either the same or substantially similar ETF that has the same companies in it. Maybe it's just somebody else's. Maybe I, I switch the company, you know, so it's the same stocks. It's, like, it's the same thing. It's just maybe it's fund one versus fund two, you know, just two different flavors of the same thing then I wouldn't be able to deduct the loss that I have. What happens is the loss gets added to the basis of the new purchase. So if I lose, let's say that I sell ABC for $20 loss on the 15th of any month, let's just say that. And on the 1st, on the first. So a couple weeks later, I buy it back. You don't get the $20 loss. The $20 loss gets added to your basis. So let's say that I bought originally, so I bought originally ABC for $50. And then I sell ABC for $30. So that gave me a $20 loss, but then I buy it back on the first for $40. I just lost my $20 loss. Instead, I'm going to get $40 plus $20, which is equal. I'm going to have a $60 basis in ABC. So I just basically, I didn't get to keep my loss. I'm get, pushing it forward. Now, when could this become really problematic? 
So let's go over a scenario where you're an active trader. So let's just call it Joe, the active trader. And he's upset because like a lot of active traders try to time the market. It's really hard to do. And uh, he sells, let's say he sells ABC for a loss. And he has a $10,000 loss in December. So let's just say this is 2021. And for the year, the year end, he has a loss or better yet, he has a break even. He breaks even. But then in January of 2022, he buys back. ABC. What did he just do? He just took away his loss. He bought the same number of shares or close to it or, you know, whatever the portion you, you apportion it. So if he, if he sold, let's say it was 10,000 shares at a dollar loss each and he bought 5,000 shares, he's, he's only has to worry about the loss on half of it. Right. But he buys it back then which equals no more loss in 2021. So you lose that. So he'd end up no longer is he at break even, but now he's at positive $10,000. You don't get to keep the, you don't get to take the loss. You have to wrap it into those new shares. And so at the buyback, you would just add $10,000 to those shares. So it could be problematic for people, especially for those that are lost harvesting at the end of the year and they get impatient and within 30 days, they buy it back. Number two, so you buy it back, which is really what you're going to be doing. I'm going to think if there's any other. You acquire a substantially identical stock. stock or securities uh, in a fully taxable trade. I don't think that's really going to apply to us. Uh, the third one is acquire an option contract. Uh, and again, it's substantially secure. It's substantially identical. So, uh, and then number four is for you folks that think you get around with it in the, uh, in the IRA. It's going to be again, substantially identical. Now are Exxon and Chevron substantially identical? No, you know, like there's, there's still some things you could, uh, you could do, but you know, really what happens is if you have a loss on a company, a lot of times you're just going to buy an index in that same area, or you're going to buy another bunch of companies that might be in that, that the same, uh, vicinity that, that, that one is in the same section and then acquire substantially identical um, stock or security in your IRA. So I'm just going to say IRA or Roth IRA. So in other words, if I have a, here's me and I have ABC, and here's my Roth. And I sell and I lose a thousand bucks. And then I buy ABC here within 30 days. Again, I lose that stock. I lose it. So it ends up. I'm not going to be able to take the loss. So that's always the issue. Um, 
the big issues here and what people screw up is there are ways around it. And so like, let's just say that explain, I'll just do this, explain number one, here's a way around it. So I sell ABC and I lose $10,000. Let's say I, I sold a thousand shares. So it's that $10 a share. I buy a, uh, what would that be? 10 contracts, calls on uh, ABC at a stock price of, you know, whatever it is at X. What that's going to do is it's going to take this loss and it's going to move it right into those 10 contracts. So let's say you bought really cheap contracts. So you did these contracts and you bought, you sold them for, you bought them for a buck a piece. So 10 contracts, a thousand bucks, you'd have a thousand and you'd have an extra $10,000 on those. Capiche, the cost of them isn't a thousand dollars each. Uh, which would be a thousand dollars total. So you, you'd actually have both. So your basis is now uh, eleven thousand dollars, right? And you've just enabled yourself to have the wash sale or the wash loss. So if you did that right away, you, you could do it. Now, if you wanted to buy back the shares. and you bought 1000 shares back, you don't have to worry about the wash sale for this guy up here because it's been trapped into the, into the option. So now I buy it back and anybody have an idea of what you could do now that you bought it back. So I bought back my 1000 shares. Now I sell my options. And my basis is now $11,000. So let's just say I sell it and I sell it for about the same price as I bought it for. I'm going to end up with a $10,000 loss. See, and I still own the shares. I managed to get it. You have to think a little bit outside the box on these things. All right. So let's just do this one. I'm going to use a kind of the net effect. This is from another article that actually spelled it out. So I'm going to steal somebody else's example. So let's say I buy and uh, I'll just use XYZ. They didn't have a, a share and uh, in, in, at, and I'm just going to say X dollars and I sell at a, $200 loss and I buy back and let's just, again, I'll, I'll just say, I, what I'm going to say is I'm going to buy uh, 100 shares. I'll make this easier Buy 100 shares of XYZ sell at a $200 loss buy 50 shares back of xyz so what portion do we have to do we have to take we have a 200 hundred dollar loss on a on 100 shares so what portion of that loss is going to attach to the new purchase i just bought back 50 shares so it'd be 50 shares versus 100 so it'd be one half times 200 so you're going to be looking at a hundred dollars is going to be added into basis. Of X, Y, Z makes sense. I know it's not the easiest thing in the whole world, but anyway, the big things to kind of remember is that brokerage is Uh, tr traders and winners. I'm going to put winners 
no wash sale loss rule. See, when you start looking at it and you just say, hey, just uh, it's only for the loss, then brokerage houses, you do it as a trader business. You can always write off your losses. They're not going to restrict you. Traders is people who are professional traders. This is where they generate their income. They're trading over 750 round trips a year. They don't have a W-2 job. They, this is, they, they, substantial amounts of money are in there. They don't take vacations. They trade about 180 days out of the, a, a year. So, I mean, they're trading a lot. I don't like trying to qualify for that. I'll just be straight up with you. It's like putting a bullseye on your back. And then winners, people that actually make money. If you make money and you sold, like sell at a $200 gain, then you don't have to worry about any of this. I can buy back the shares again. If I sold it at a gain, it's no problem. It's never a, never an issue. And I use that, by the way, at the end of the year with taxpayers that husband and wife that are, you know, let's say that they're below $100,000 a year or, or excuse me, $80,000 is the magic number this year. Uh, Long-term capital gains. Just so you guys know, are taxed at zero, 15, or 20%. And if you're married, filing jointly, I think it's 80,800 is what you're in. So you're up to, so less than $80,000, you're going to be in zero. So what we see is a lot of folks that are, let's say they made 80, or excuse me, let's say they made $50,000 and they're going into, you know, and we're into uh, December and you look at unrealized long-term capital gains. So I'm looking at unrealized means that there's companies that you've been holding on to for a while. And what I'll do is I'll sell and then buy back. So let's say that I sell and for a gain, uh, which equals gain of $20,000. I buy back, which is break even. But that gain of twenty thousand dollars gets added to my fifty, so I would be at seventy thousand dollars. But the long-term capital gains rate is zero percent, so I don't have to pay any tax on that. And all I did is I reset my basis to the uh, the new the new price. Excuse me. Here we'd add the the gain is I just added that to my basis. So if I bought if I if my basis was fifty grand and I sold it for seventy. And I had twenty thousand dollars a gain, fantastic. I buy it back at seventy thousand dollars. All I did is I adjusted my basis up to seventy thousand dollars because I made money on this. I don't have to worry about the wash sale loss rule. All right, let's jump into uh, options and things like that. So you get into the same deal where, again, I have ABC. Let's say I bought it for fifty bucks. Oops. 50 bucks and then I sell it. So this is my buy and I sell it for 40. So I have a net loss of, well, I'll put down here, 10, 10, you know, $10 per share. And then I buy, let's say I buy a hundred shares. So I'll just put it like that. So, and I sell a hundred shares. So then I buy one option on ABC for 40 bucks. What did I just do? You know, I, I, I have my loss, but if the company go, if the, if it goes back up, I'm going to make money on it. So what they do is they said, you, you, you essentially bought it back. You're not really, you're not really recognizing that full loss. You're hedging it. You bought the same thing back. So we're going to roll that loss into the price. So your $40 is no longer $40. It's, you know, again, this is a hundred shares. So it would be, uh, you'd add your $10, thousand bucks. So you'd add a thousand dollars of basis. Hope that makes sense to you guys. For those of you guys who have to deal with this stuff day in and day out, it probably does. 
the IRA we already talked a little bit about. I'm not going to get into short selling. It's so complicated, but if I if I realized a loss and then I had entered into a short sale of the identical stock, again, I borrowed the stock and I basically borrowed somebody else's stock and I haven't bought it back to cover that they're still going to say that is within the 30 days. So, you know, for those of you who do short selling, you'll be aware of this. Uh, you actually have to uh, make sure that you are aware of that. If you're selling something and then you believe that you're somehow covering, making it so that if it comes back up that you participate in that, you got to be careful. If I do, uh, let's say Exxon, and let's say I have a loss on Exxon, it pulls back and I'm like, oh, nuts. I could buy an energy ETF, but I couldn't, uh, I, I'd have to be very careful about whether I buy uh, something that's tied in directly to, to to Exxon. I can I can be off, but I just can't go do the ex exact same thing. I could probably do uh, Chevron or something else that, that's a competitor, but I can't do Exxon and I can't buy an option on Exxon. Could I buy an option on Chevron? Yeah. Um, other things to look at. I'm just going to give you guys kind of a chart and use this because it can get confusing quick. I'm just going to give you guys kind of like uh, six scenarios, right? I'm just going to draw up six scenarios. Hopefully you guys can see that. Here, I'll put it over here so you guys can see it really well. Okay. On top, I'm going to do buy. Oops. I'm going to do what did I, what did I buy? And then on the bottom, I'm going to do what did I sell? So I bought a stock and then sold at a loss. That's your typical wash sale, by the way. What if I buy an option and sold at loss? What if I buy a put and then sell and I'm going to, this is sold to close, obviously. Nobody's exercising. Sell to close at loss. Now down here, I'm going to sell a short and then buy to cover at loss. And for those of you guys who don't know short sales, again, I'm just borrowing a buy to cover at loss. So I borrowed somebody else's shares thinking that the stock's going to go down. But instead of going down, it goes up. How about I call, I sell a call and then close at loss. Company went up and I had to buy it back. Um... How about I sell a put, which we're usually the seller in our strategies, by the way, and then I have to close at a loss. So I end up doing it. On all those scenarios, what kind of happens? So if the big ones here, so if I bought, let's just do number one. If I bought a stock and sold it at a loss, the things I have to be care careful about is buying stock buying same stock. Number two is selling an option. Everything else I can pretty much do. So I showed you an example of you could buy an option, right? And that might take you out of this. Or I could sell an option and attach it to deflect a, a loss. So I could sell the option and then I could immediately sell something that's a cheap option and that loss would come attached to that option, right? I could do that. What if I buy an option and I sell it at a loss? Same thing. I bought the option, but if you buy the stock within 30 days, it's a wash sale. And then number two, of course, is obviously buy, buy a call on, uh, on the same company. 
So again, this is if I, I sold at a loss, both of these are I'm selling at a loss. So I bought a stock and it lost money and I sold it. If I buy back the same stock within 30 days or if I sell an option on that company within 30 days, I don't get to take the loss. It gets added to the basis of the of the of the property that I uh, of whatever I did, whatever I um, and this isn't actually so this is really going to be buying an option. My little brain was was having a, a problem there. It's really you're buying the option, you're not really selling an option. So the selling an option, you're never going to have a problem with. But if I bought a stock and I sold at a loss, then I would buy an option to participate in the upswing, so not sell. If I buy an option and it goes down in value and I buy the stock after I sell at a loss, so I bought an option and uh, I, I, I sold it at a loss. So I bought an option on a company and I thought it was going to go up and it didn't. And then I bought the company anyway. I don't get to take the loss on the option. If I bought a call on the same company, same situation. So I sell it to, to end it out because I bought the option and then just go ahead and I, uh, I, I buy another one on the same company. I don't get to take the loss. I have to wait 30 days. Uh, how about I buy a put? And then I sell and close at a loss. So I have the right to put the, the company to, uh, to somebody. Maybe the company goes up in value. And uh, same thing. If I buy the buy the stock, it's a wash sale rule. Uh, just think about this. You know, uh, it's the same thing. If I buy a call, it's really just the same thing. We're seeing this over and over again. And then number three is because I, I bought a put and then I sold it. Obviously, the next one is going to be buying another, buying another put on the same company. Now, if you have spreads, then when you have spreads, you treat each leg as a separate transaction. So depending on the type of uh, transaction you're doing, yeah, I'm going to see if I can make that. There we go depending on the type of transaction you're doing, you have to be careful on each one about what you're doing within that 30 days after you close out a leg. So I get these questions all the time. I got a ton of them recently where people are saying, well, what about this? What about this? What about th th this, you know, debit credit spread? What about bull put spread and all these other things? Get that out of your head. Let's look at the actual transaction itself and break them into two pieces. So you're buying an option. Sometimes uh, you might be selling an option, which we'll get into here in a second. But if you're buying the option, then you just have to be care. Did I at, lose on the option that I sold or that I, that, that, I, that I bought? Did it go down in value? So I sold it at a loss. And then did I buy the, the, uh, the underlying security? Because then that would be a wash sale rule. That would definitely trigger it. All right. So now what if we sell? We sell short, then this is kind of the worst of all things. I sell a short and I buy a cover at a loss. This just looks horrible. So I sell a short and I buy to cover. Then you can't buy the stock. It's going to be a wash sale. I can't buy an option. So I can't sell a stock or buy an option on the same one. Can't do either. And I can't sell a call. Well, I can't just do an option. So buy a stock, sell a stock, buy a call, buy an option. And then I cannot buy or sell a put. So I could just say, all calls, all uh, all puts. You can't do any of that. When you do the sh uh, selling short, you're pretty much out of luck. If you lose money on it, just take a breather on that or on, on that company for 30 days. Here, I'll make this a little smaller for you guys. See if I, you guys can all see it. All right. How about I sell a call? I'm, I write a call. So I'm a writer of a covered call. And then I close it at a loss. So here's all the things that I cannot do. These are all wash sale 
uh, loss rule. You ready? It's the same thing. If I close at a loss, I cannot buy or sell that same stock. I cannot sell or buy an option. And I'll just say call. And I cannot sell or buy an option that's a put. If I lose money on that, don't be touching that same stock or you're going to lose your, your loss. And this is really important if it's towards the end of the year because some of you guys are harvesting losses. You just have to basically take January off. So if you're doing it towards the end of the year, same thing. I sell a put, close at a loss, then they're all the same thing. If you're the writer of that position, which a lot of my clients are, then you just have to say, hey, if I have a loss and I'm buying it back, I'm not getting that loss. It's going to roll into the new in the new purchase or the new sale. So again, buy, sell stock, buy, oops, buy, sell, call. Yeah, buy, sell, put. I have limited opportunities there. And that's how it can be triggered. The IRS expects that you keep track of this. The IRS it, in, in, in basically says this is your problem, not ours. So you keep a spreadsheet on it and you want to make sure, like I could just give you rules of thumb is if you sell something at a loss, mark it down and say, is this something that I'm willing to, to buy back? Is the reason I sold it at a loss, like, do I need that loss? Am I okay rolling it forward? Um, if you have the same companies that you buy in a retirement account, then just be careful. If you ever sell anything at a loss in either account, be looking at the other account saying, make sure you're not buying that same security back in the same account. You just got to make sure that uh, you're being aware of this because if it gets triggered for the loss, uh, the wash sale loss rule, it could be a little bit disruptive, especially if you're harvesting losses at the end of the year. So the example I gave about selling in, in December and buying it back in January, is very applicable to a lot of you guys. And a lot of folks don't have any idea that that wash sale is rolling around out there. Now, last thing I'll lead you with, again, Easiest ways to avoid wash sale loss rule is uh, don't sell at a loss. I mean, it sounds silly, but sell at gains. You know, if you have something that you're losing and you're going to get out of it, then get out of it. If you have a loser that it's just a one-off and, but you want to be, you want to be exposed to the same sector. So let's say you want to be exposed to the energy sector and you just had a company you didn't like, then go by all means, go buy an energy ETF or something like that but don't buy something that's that same stock or that's equivalent to that same stock. So that makes it easy. And if you're always selling it again, like you're buying good companies, and you're not letting yourself be in the position where you're trying to harvest the loss, you know, that you're, you're buying things that over the long haul, I mean, like it's, you have really good companies like every now and again, there's one that might squirt down that that's a good dividend producing stock that may have a small loss, but, Again, the only way you recognize it by selling it, most of my clients don't sell. They're harvesting the dividend. They're harvesting the options. But if you ever do find yourself in that scenario, then either, again, wait the time, put in that same technique I showed you where if you had the loss, then buy back, buy a, buy a call. Let the, uh, let the loss attach to those buy back your shares and then later sell those, sell that call. Um, so that you're not in a situation where like we're, we're, we're making sure we're putting another, uh, plate of, uh, you know, again, I'm buying a, an option to basically cover the loss to make sure that it attaches. So the wash sale is again, a hundred shares. Let's say I sell one contract or I buy one, one, one contract of an option and all that loss attaches to it. Now I can go back and buy the, the shares of the company and then later on uh, sell that and make my money or, or harvest that loss at that point. So if it sounds confusing as mud, that's about right. There's accountants that have been playing with this stuff for decades 
and it's still there's some unknowns and there's still some you know what if you're buying it at, at, at the money in the money or out of the money like there's there's different scenarios that could be triggered that uh you just never really can think about you just have to see it in real life and you see somebody going through it where they have multiple legs like on a on a spread and they're like what's going to happen do i have to worry about the wash sale loss rule just remember you don't lose the loss it just moves on to the basis of the covering securities that you're buying so again if i have a loss and then i buy the company back let's say day 29 uh, the equivalent uh stock it doesn't mean that I lose the loss. It means I can't take it right now. It just kicked it forward into that new, uh, into that new company. Great. It has new basis. If you made a mistake and you're like, you know, nuts. Worst case scenario is you're taking the loss the following year. You would just sell it, take the loss at that point in that particular year, and then make sure you wait your thirty days, right? So those are your scenarios. I kind of gave you six. I just said one, two, three. This is four five, six. I gave you kind of the six scenarios. First one was I buy a company, buy a stock, sell it at a loss. Second one is I bought an option and I sold it at a loss. Third one is I bought a put, the right to put the stock to somebody and it, I ended up having to close it at a loss. Uh, I sold something short. So I borrowed somebody's shares, sold it, and now I have to cover. I'm kind of toast if I lose money on that. I really can't be touching that same stock. I mean, really, that it's, it's the case for all of these. If I have a loss on the sale of something, so I sold something and had to buy it back, and I, and I had a loss, if I'm going back into that security, they're going to roll that loss into the new basis. And that's uh, the easiest way to conceptualize it is, oh, shoot. You know, did I sell something and have to buy it back and lose a little bit of money? If I go back into that same company, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to have to roll that over and I'm going to have to track it myself because the brokerage house isn't going to do it unless they have software that's triggering that some some will. They'll say, is this a wash sale? And then you can say, oh, yes. Yay. And I'll click on it.